Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the May 18th, 2015 Mesa City Council study session. The first item on our agenda to this afternoon is to review the agenda for our formal council meeting later tonight. So let's do that. The first couple of items involve some liquor license applications. And then item four is taking action on some contracts. Currently, I should uh, note that all of the items on the current agenda are on the cons on consent agenda, and we're just checking to see if any council member wants to take anything off that consent agenda. Uh, again, item four is different contact purchase contracts. Hey, Mayor, uh, when yes. you'd like, uh, there was a follow-up, I think, for item four I, four I that council members had. Right, would you? Uh, I've got some great information from our water staff and maybe Dan. Uh, it's amazing what they're doing to make sure that we have redundant power supplies, the water system never fails, and he may have more information along those lines, Mr. Mayor. There were a few questions on Thursday regarding the rental uh, contract for uh, emergency generators. Um, the city does own three large generators, uh, two in energy and one for fire. Um, like last year, we do intend to use one of the uh, energy uh, units to save some money for the city, so we'll have that in place. Still does uh, require a uh, rental of two units. Uh, and we do have money in our capital program uh, in the near future that we would be placing some permanent units to, uh, so we wouldn't need to rent in the future. So we'll be taking care of that as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, does that resolve the questions that we had regarding that item? Okay. Thank you very much. Moving on to other items under agenda item four, other city contracts. And then item five is taking action on several resolutions. Yes, <coughs> Mr. Glover. I just have a quick question on 5F. And I was wondering how you got to the $58,500 amount. Yes, that's based on a per foot charge um, that we used. I think it's a dollar thirty-one or two uh, per linear foot um, to lease that conduit. That's kind of a market rate. We did talk to some other communities about what they're charging. Some other industries. That's also a very similar rate. It's actually the same rate <laughs> as what we included on an agreement with another telecom company out at the Falcon Field Airfield. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. Uh, agenda item six involves introducing ordinances, and seven is taking public comment on ordinances that have been previously introduced. Uh, agenda item eight are the items that are not on the consent agenda, and there will be a series of uh, public hearings upstairs uh, having to do with the town center assessment and then also uh, utility rates and fees and the capital improvement program. So those items are off of the consent agenda and will be the subject of hearings and then uh, council votes on those items. Okay, council, any questions or concerns about tonight's agenda? If not, let's move on to the next item for the study session agenda, which uh, item 2A, hear a presentation, discuss and provide direction on the modifications to the buzz <coughs> transit route. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Um, I need to make sure I get this up. There. Um, my name is Jody Sterl, and I'm the Transit Services Director. During the budget season, we have talked about um, possible savings from that we may have from a local route when light rail starts service sometime later, sometimes in the next fiscal year, um, and using that savings to try a modification to the to our bus service. Um, our bus service is our local circulator that runs between downtown and West Mesa. Um, their current route has, does a loop around Cherry University and Alma School. What we're proposing is to eliminate that loop and continue the buzz down Rio Salado all the way to Dobson and then loop it through Riverview, the commercial district of Riverview, um, down through um, Bass, not Bass Pro, but down through the Riverview up Do Dobson and then back on Rio Salado heading eastbound. So. We would providing our down, connecting our downtown and Riverview with a one seat trip for residents in that corridor to travel between both areas. Um, what we're proposing is a pilot, an eight, a six month pilot for 180 days, which would start October 26, 2015 and run through April 24, 2016. And that's um, consistent with the Valley Metro service changes. So it would be in that window. 
The approximate cost would be $64,000. Um, the funding would come from when we, right now our Alma School route diverts from Main Street and Alma School down to the Sycamore Light Rail Station and back every trip. Um, our projected savings for that for a full, is anywhere, depending on when light rail starts, from 97000 to about $125,000 a year. So this route, we'll, we'll use that savings. That would be general fund savings, and we'll just reprogram the money from the, one, well, the 104, the Alma School route, to the buzz. And then this will be just become part of the Valley Metro service change process for the April, and we'll evaluate the process, evaluate the route as it goes. Um, and we'll be doing targeted outreach um, on Thursday on the bus to get... Um, comments back from the residents. So that's what we're proposing for this next um, budget cycle, if you have any questions. And Mayor Council, we did a similar pilot program, uh, similar, but kind of, right. on the East uh, East Mesa, too, when, during the uh, kind of the winter months when people are a lot more people here and looking for opportunities to go to our shopping centers. And so we did that on the east side. We, like, like try to, here with the an adding to an existing route. So we think this might be successful in getting more city um, Set of our residents between downtown and out to Riverview. So, with the savings we're going to realize, we thought this might be a good use of those funds. Great. Great. This is good news. Uh, Council, any questions on this topic? Thank you, Jody. Appreciate the update. Next item, uh, 2B, is to hear a presentation and discuss an overview of the environmental compliance fee. <coughs> Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. There you go. Um, you, we had asked for an update on the environmental compliance fee, and with me I also brought Lenny Hume, our Transportation Director, as uh, part of the tra uh, environmental compliance fee goes towards some of the activities and programs within his department. Um, the environmental compliance fee is a set amount that's applied to each of the, uh, each of the accounts within the City of Mesa utility accounts. If a customer has more than one account, the fee is only applied one time. So we have some customers who have both who have water, wastewater, maybe electric and gas, and solid waste, all five of our utilities. The, uh, um, uh, the fee is put onto their account just one time, so one time per account within the city of Mesa. Our current rate is $7.32 per month per account, um, and it covers the federal and state environmental mandates that we have to adhere to. Uh, most of the mandates do come with fees and fines, if we are found in not to be in compliance with those particular mandates. And so these are the activities that we do as a city to make sure that we are always in compliance with those mandates. Uh, the current fee is expected to generate about $14.8 million in the 15-16 fiscal year. And the different types of things that we are, it funds is air quality, storm water quality, hazardous waste management, and asbestos management. So those are the types of different programs that we have here within the city um, for that type of compliance. When we look at the, uh, uh, where the expenses are over the associated uh, fiscal years this year compared to next year, you will see that we are consistent between 1415 and 1516. Um, for those of you that were here last year, you may recall that we, had, we needed to do an increase in the fee last year because of the increased cost in the basin maintenance itself on the park site through our parks department, just the um, uh, landscaping contracts that we had had a large increase in the cost of those contracts citywide, which affected the basins as well as the parks. Um, but going into 15-16, we're not seeing anything significantly changing in our operations for the environmental side. One thing I did want to, and the reason why I had Lenny join me today, is that in the 15-16 proposed budget, you will see that $17 million versus the $14 million from this year. That does include a lot of one-time purchases related to storm drain pumps. Some of those were budgeted in the 14-15 fiscal year and are being carried over into next year <coughs> because they haven't been completed yet. And then there's an additional million dollars of new, um, ex new uh, expenditures for next year, also related to storm drain pumps. Um, so that is the major difference between the 14-15 and the 15-16 budget. So if you had any questions on those, um, Lenny is here to answer any questions regarding that particular program. The rest of the programs are consistent between the two fiscal years. Mayor, Mayor and Council, Lenny, why don't you, I mean, that's, that is a significant, it's just projects that you didn't quite get believed, but what's the, what's the purpose of those pumps and how will that help us in responding to stormwater management um, uh, discharge permits or whatever we have, what do we call it? 
Chris, Mayor, Council. What these are, a general routine maintenance of these pumps, if you know, we, we estimate a pump system will last about 25 years. So we're in the process of replacing the pumps that have gone bad. These are typically small retention basins along the SRP uh, drainage air areas and along, and another example is the one at Country Club and uh, Broadway Road, the underpass there, that pump system is about 25 years old. So one of the pumps in that area is, of the three is not working. We're also upgrading these well systems to allow us to get better maintenance. And you talked about redundancy with, with uh, Mr. Clevenger's area. We're doing the same thing where we can actually bring in, have an all access road to get in in case we lose a pump for any reason, it burns out or something gets stuck in it, we can bring in a portable pump to drain that uh, retention basin down. So this is just general maintenance and it gets us an opportunity. We're adding cameras and some lighting devices to that so we can actually manage that from our office. Mr. Richards. So those are capital expenses being handled in a different budget than the environmental compliance fee? Is that? No, they're, uh, they're, 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 they're in there. So, this. so if you're only generating 14.8 and the budget 17 mil, help me so, add that number up. Yes. <laughs> Um, Mayor, Councilmember Richens, part of the environmental fee includes a small portion that's aimed at one-time expenses. And what we do is we, as we have savings over the year, we apply those to these one-time items. So we're able to cover with our fund balance from this particular fee, we are able to cover these particular expenses. We know there's a life cycle to these and we've been planning for this um, and saving up that money for these types of improvements. Got it. Okay. Good. And that is why we wanted to draw the attention that while it is looking like it's $17 million, the ongoing portion of this is around the $14.8 million. And how, how many, I'm trying to remember how many years we've been, had this. we've had the smallest seven, fee, but we eight, pegged this. Eight? Right. It, we've had the fee for a long time. We've had the fee for a long time. Uh, back in uh, 2011, it's not when we started it, but in 2011 is when we received council direction to fully fund our right. environmental mandates. Up right. to that point, it had been a um, very small fee just to cover a portion of, of those mandates. Um, in 2011 is when we received direction to fully fund through this particular right. okay. funding mechanism. Okay. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of feedback from constituents about how excited or pleased they are with the maintenance of the, the basins that they, mm -hmm. I mean, they feel like parks again. You know, they had gotten to a point where they felt really utilitarian, um, but People are, uh, you know, last weekend my son and a bunch of his friends were, were hanging out down there. You know, it's nice grass and shade and everything. So nice job. You're doing a great job with the, the fee. And, and I think it's really helped from an aesthetic standpoint. Uh, an important functionality as part of our system. So thanks. Thank you, Mr. Richens. Any other questions, Council? Thank you very much. Thank Good you. presentation. Appreciate the update. Uh, we do have uh, an e-session to go to before our council meeting tonight, so I think we're, that's why this meeting was kind of lightly scheduled. But uh, next item on our agenda is to hear reports on meetings or conferences <coughs> attended. Uh, I know I've been gone from a couple of study sessions the last week. Um, I, uh, just to, for those who are, I'm sure, very curious about what I do with my time, um, I spent, we had a very productive trip out to see the folks at Apple in Cupertino, California. Uh, I got to tell you, this, uh, I'm more excited than ever about uh, Apple coming to Mesa, Arizona. That, uh, that company is amazing. The more I learn about it, the more I'm impressed. So first part of next year, we will have uh, the second of two worldwide uh, command centers in the entire Apple uh, company in Mesa, Arizona. So it's a big deal. And then uh, later, I went on a trip uh, with GPEC and U.S. Conference of Mayors to Washington, D.C., where we worked on some a surface transportation bill that's uh, about to expire. Also met with Boeing and our congressional district back there, and I thought that was a very productive meeting. Mr. Glover. Uh, I had the opportunity to two events last week. The first one was a kickoff for Mendoza Field uh, to honor Sergeant Brandon Mendoza, who was killed a year ago. And we have a set up a GoFundMe account as well, so we're raising monies to improve the uh, park in his memory. I also had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. Uh, for Top Cops Week, and it was a wonderful experience, a very moving and touching experience for the uh, candlelight vigil for all of the fallen officers that we have lost in the United States. 
Mr. Luna. Uh, real quick, uh, Council Member Fincher and I held a diversity luncheon over at the Mesa Arts Center. We had around nine to ten participants, and uh, they provided some very good information. Uh, the purpose of this is to engage the community, especially those members that feel disenfranchised. And so we want to bring them into the fold. We want them to contribute to the city of Mesa, and we want them to feel part of this community. So we're going to have a series of this meeting maybe uh, four times a year, and uh, I want to thank uh, Ruth Easy for assisting us with that, as well as my assistant Marisa for putting uh, together a great luncheon, so. Thank you. All right, next item on our agenda is scheduling of meetings and general information. Mr. Brady. Thank you, Mayor. Just a reminder, we have a study session this Thursday at 7.30, and also uh, this Friday, May 22nd, uh, Vice Mayor Kavanaugh will be having a joint coffee, hot chocolate meeting with the council members Richens and Kavanaugh. It'll be at the new Sheraton um, at Riverview, 86, 860 North Riverview. So um, it's a great hotel, great opportunity to kind of explore and get to know it. So again, this Friday at 7.30 a.m. And then um, this Saturday, big event at Mesa Aquatics Complex. They have the dedication of the Mesa High Pool and the Lazy River, and that's also being used as a fundraiser. I encourage everybody to um, buy your rubber ducky. Uh, so you can put that in the pool and see if it uh, can outswim the other rubber duckies and uh, use that as a way to raise funds for Mendoza Field also. Also, Councilor, uh, Council, I want to give you a heads up ahead of time. Um, many of you will be attending National League of Cities on June 11th, I believe. So because of that, we will not have a quorum to have a meeting. So we will not be meeting on June 11th. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we now, I would now entertain a motion to enter into an executive session. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. We will now go to the executive session. Yeah.